But I can't do. Good morning, Vietnam. How's everybody doing? Um, today, inshallah ta'ala, we're talking about rizq and we're talking about the economy. So, <clears throat> when I was a little kid, the bird, I was a little kid growing up in Winnipeg and the number one bird that like was everywhere in the province of Manitoba, Winnipeg, Manitoba, was the robin. If you don't know a robin, it's got a black back and a orange reddish type of stomach. Robins, okay? When we were little kids, the teachers consistently told us never to feed the birds. Never to feed the birds. And so you're thinking to yourself, you know what? I'm generous, I see these birds, they need help, they need food, um, but we're told not to feed the birds? Actually, I got a really, I got a really cool side story to this. The reason, I don't know if I should tell you the punchline or tell you the side story. So my father-in-law, I'm gonna tell you the side story first. My father-in-law does not heed this recommendation and he feeds all the animals. I tell him, you're like a Disney princess. All the birds and, and, uh, and squirrels and all the animals come surrounding him because he always feeds them. So my father-in-law was traveling. My father-in-law was traveling and this is what happened. I actually did one of my classes from his home when I was, you know, um, in that area. And um, it's like a second floor. And while, as I was coming towards the end of my, uh, end of my lecture, I heard a knock, kind of like a knock on the window, on the glass. <coughs> so, after I had finished the lecture, just a few minutes l later, I'm thinking to myself, we're on the second floor. Um, who is knocking on the glass? There's no access to anybody. It's not even a balcony. You know, who's knocking on the glass on the second floor? So then I put two and two together and then I asked my mother-in-law, I said, did you feed the squirrels? I go, because they're knocking on the door, you didn't feed them. And she goes, oh yeah, I forgot. The squirrels were literally, it was almost mother of time and they didn't get their food. They were sitting outside knocking on the door saying, what's up with that? Where's our food? Okay, so that's the side story. Let's get back to the, to the original lesson. Never feed the birds, never feed the animals. Why not? So here's the interesting thing. If you start feeding an animal, the animal or the bird becomes dependent on you. And you are not capable of feeding it every day for the rest of its life. The bird or the animal becomes dependent on you for rizq, for provision. And, and it becomes trained, it will just keep coming back, coming back, coming back for that risk, for that provision, and you are not capable of feeding it for the rest of its life, so don't start, because you're gonna change its mindset, and then you're actually gonna lead to the harm of this animal, just like I gave you the example of the squirrels. They're literally sitting outside the door, knocking on the window, okay? Um, but later on, as I learned Dean, and I started to understand this a little bit better, you do not feed the birds because the way you provide for the birds is the way a human being provides. And if you just leave the bird alone, Allah will provide for it. And Allah's provision, Allah's rizq to these birds is perfect. Allah's rizq and provision to these birds is perfect and your, vi and your provision is imperfectly human, it's imperfect. And because of that, you will cause harm to these birds, so don't turn them away from the rizq that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala provides for them. Yes, this is what our teachers are telling us at this young age. And so, as the Prophet sallallahu said, if you only placed your trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the way you should be placing your trust in Allah, Allah will provide for you the same way He provides for the birds. SubhanAllah. And I just told you this story, right? The, Allah's provision for the birds is perfect. Uh, the Prophet ﷺ said, لَوْ أَنَّكُمْ تَوَكَّلْتُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ حَقَّ تَوَكُّلِهِ That if you only place your trust in Allah حَقَّ with the, with the right 
Tawakkul on Allah, placing trust in Allah. Allah will provide for you just like He provides for the birds. They wake up and they travel, they go with empty bellies and they come back with bellies full. And they come back with bellies full. And I wanted to remind our, ourselves like that. I know there's, there's this immense focus on the, um, on the virus and the health and what, we're, um, what you may be feeling. And I'd love to hear your, your, um, what's happening in your situation is the economic pandemic that's going to happen. If it's not already started happening, the collapse of the stock markets, people um, being laid off, jobs that are, you know, 90% of their workforce going home, everything closing, it's worldwide. And this next tsunami wave is going to be an economic one. And I believe it's coming very shortly. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. And so I would like to remind myself and, and you of spiritual ways to increase your rizq spiritual ways to increase your provisions. So number one, the first thing I want to remind you of is being thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shukr. As, the, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed in the Quran, لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ That if you are thankful, I will increase you. So as you're in, this, um, in these isolations and you're in your homes, try to think more and more of how you can be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And thankfulness is with all of our limbs. So we not only are thankful with our tongue, but we're thankful with our wealth. And so we share with our wealth. We are thankful with our um, hands. So uh, we help out with other people, for example, or maybe a neighbor needs some assistance or something like that, and so on. So you're thankful with all of these things. The other um, way to spiritually increase your risk is as the Prophet Sallallahu taught us that if, you, if uh, whoever amongst you wishes to have their risk their provisions increased whoever um, wishes for their provisions to be increased rahima, let them um, fulfill their ties of kinship or tie their ties of kinship which is really interesting in the times we're living in as well. We have economic problems or economic issues. And the Prophet ﷺ is saying that if you want your rizq to be increased, then strengthen your ties and strengthen your connectedness with your relatives. Now, <clears throat> as I come to the conclusion here, I think we've all got a relative uh, maybe an extended relative or maybe parents or something like that that we haven't checked in on enough Maybe we haven't checked in with them at all Or maybe you know, maybe you have some nephews and nieces that you haven't checked in with or maybe you aren't calling your parents enough Or you know, who is it that's close to you yet? You haven't checked on them Maybe you haven't even communicated with them in this economic issue that we're dealing with in these isolations, I want to remind myself and remind you to number one, be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and continue to have that shukr. And the second thing is, let's take a moment now after you're done with this Facebook Live and go and find a relative of yours that you haven't communi communicated with in a while or maybe during all of this you haven't even touched base with them or maybe it was just really briefly and reconnect with them. Fulfill those ties of kingdom, ask how are things going with them and inshallah ta'ala, that will be a means for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase in your rizq. And that's it. Jazakallah khairan.